he will draw one card, but not really instant effect. Yeah, Elspeth will be annoying, so let's make sure that she dies. And honestly, that should be it. I think we just won. Hello everyone, it's Slot here and today finally we have the Mirror Control on the channel. It has been a while. We actually didn't have the Mirror Control since I think first day of the set. This is a full-blown control deck. We have the Mirror, we have counter spells, removal, we have some sweepers because you know for the Mirror the biggest problem is finding a good sweeper. So instead we have three of them and each one works differently so hopefully we can match them to situation. We have early game Path of Peril that can just get rid of all the one and two drops. Uh, Geek's command can be a bit flexible, it can, you know, board sweep and sacrifice the big thing. Usually it solves most of the problems. And Invasion of Fiora is just, you know, all around, I sweep the board, I don't care. Uh, the big thing is Celestus, man, we play two of them because we really want them. For in the mirror it's very clunky to find the correct answer. You need to cycle them. For some matchups cutdown will be abysmal, for some syncopate will be bad, and sometimes uh, Path of Pearl won't hit anything. And the fact that you gain life you will see against mono red. It gives you so much more flexibility because suddenly you can heal one life a turn at least. Other than this we have Earth Air Resurrected. One of the ideas for the deck was that it is usually hard to keep up with the tempo with this kind of control, right? Usually in first like four or five turns, you are falling behind slowly but surely. And Earth I Resurrected is a great tempo play. Usually nobody expects it, so you know, the blocks that you get with Erta usually are amazing. And one of the cool things is also that Kaito Shizuki of course draws cards when you have a creature. Usually you don't have a creature because you are a control deck. However, if you counter something like Invoke that was supposed to kill Kaito Shizuki and suddenly the Invoke is countered, you have a creature, they are tapped out because it costs 5 mana and now you untap, attack them, draw a card from Kaito and probably control the game from there. And and that's a really cool play. Erta is really cool addition because when you need it, it is a counter spell. It gives you much more hard counter spells than normally you could play because it's also a creature removal. So this is one of the cool things about the deck. You have counter spells when you need them. Guys, don't forget to subscribe for Demir if you enjoyed the, the deck and the gameplay today. And I mean, have fun with the good old Demir. All right, we're going first. All right, going first with Syncopate always feels great. We also get, let's start with the black mana, because that can suggest removal. Like for one mana there is no counter spell, but there is a removal. So let's, let's see, let's see. Probably Kaito will be the first priority, right? I don't love playing into the open mana, in all honesty. Maybe we we'll just go with the Silex, but Silex is not amazing here. Next is Trespasser, right? Alright, this will be a very weird play. But I think it's it's okay. There's no secret I can't uncover. I think it's okay. It means his mana got wasted, he will play the trespasser and then we start answering. Yana is you know painful. <laughs> Extremely painful. But we'll try to work with it. It means let's let's pretend it was a trespasser and we just removed it, alright? Alright, but now we can't go like this. We play the land. And I will go with Celestus. I need to make sure that I have mana to cast stuff. And Syncopate for one should be good enough. He will probably remove it, right? Yeah, I expected to show that exactly. They somehow always have it. Alright, good one. Now he cannot discard cards, so we have more time. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? Now of course we need to keep drawing. Thanks. I'll be I mean this is not a bad card. In all honesty. I think we go like this, man. But no, right? They will discard first and then play their spell. So we cannot play everything, unfortunately. Maybe we'll just keep up the land and cycle it. Yeah, that's probably the play. 
The board is scary, but Liliana is far from using the ability. Air type, perfect. That's a really good one. Alright. That's also one of the issue and man, I just need them to cast something super high value. Heroes downfall. Oh that hurts. That would I want Kaito and the board man. I will counter it. Uh, because I have air type. And I probably discard Silex. And uh, it hurts their hand as well, man. So while it hurts every turn even more, we get some stuff done. And now we can make another token, which means Liliana needs to minus two again. And then it's card for card, right? Yeah. All right. We will have to discard the tower. Oh, right. They want the creature. You got it. But now you have to play something. What is the play? That's that's what I hoped for. I honestly hoped for invoke, but it's close enough. <laughs> and now we have a creature that will draw cards. That's why I protected Kaito so much. You can see that this is already game over. And I have protection spell even for Kaito, so he won't be able to kill it anymore. And this is why we have in the deck Ertai Resurrected. No Let's see, I, I want to check the card from the top. This is definitely not what you want. I mean, it has its use, but it's bad. He can kill one Planeswalker at most. And we have so much life that let's make sure that he cannot answer both man. No cost is too great to quill my and I will draw cards. You know what, I'll take a cut down. It might come handy at some point. Probably not the best draw, but we should be okay. This is this is exactly what we expected. So the creature is gone. That this is one of the reasons I played Soaring, because Kaito without the creature won't won't be drawing cards anymore. And now I have Sorin that keeps drawing cards, and with this negate man, he's in some real pickle. Yeah. Uh, now we can change the card down into a good card for the matchup. Probably Sorin was better candidate, but I'm just greedy and I always want <laughs> full value man. We'll cycle it later, when we stop drawing cut downs. I think they might have like Invoke and Corrupt and we counter only one of them. Like they are still playing for some reason, so there must be something. Alright, I mean now I want a Sweeper. However we can... <laughs> that was the counter spell. <laughs> that would answer the Obliterator, but it's okay. X Command. Kinda nice, kinda nice. So we can kill the obliterator, but what about the other one? We have creatures, we have Ertai. That's 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 a decent trait, man. Yeah, I think it's good enough. Uh, let's just make sure that the grotto is here. So first he sacrifices a creature, and then we get stuff. I could make a big vampire, but I think plasing is really good here. We threaten the ultimate, we force him to attack us, like on Sorin. I get the land for the next turn. So we are very, very close to closing the game fully, but honestly, he uh, he lost the game when we draw those counter spells. Uh, let's draw. Go for the throat. Not the perfect removal for the situation, that's for sure. Uh, let's keep drawing. We're at 20, so man, the, this Celestus we're healing so much. Let's definitely try to draw. We play the land because we have so much stuff right now. Seven, eight mana, right? So we possibly need double counter spell. So it will be six mana. Four, six. We don't have too much more. And I really want to cast Ertai because it answers the Flash Gorger, right? So let's get the board clear, force him to deal with Sorin, and wait with Teferi just a little bit. 
Alright, so he will attack. But our face. Very interesting. On the face, I will take the damage, man. Because that means they can play at instant speed only. Yeah, I, I think this attack was not perfect. And now, this 3 damage does not matter. I would react differently if they attack Sorin because I actually care about his loyalty. So he gets the card, we get the damage. But we have so many planeswalkers that it's fine. Uh, do I care about it? Not really. Alright, you got it. I play the ward. So we are at 13, it's not even close to leave our range. I know he wants to kill us with corrupt, but we have double counter spell, we have triple counter spell. And we probably won't get two ultimates, so let's let's go like this. Uh, we should have nine mana for Teferian double counter spell. Yep. So on this turn we have negate and stroke. From the next turn we have everything. And I will draw a card, because the only punishment for high loyalty is playing Invoke that we can counter. And we absolutely do not play anything more here. Alright, your go. Sure. The point is that he might hope that we will counter this stuff, but we have infinite tokens. Like, we can make however we want, and he needs to kill our planeswalkers at some point. So I I think it's a bait. Let's just make sure that I do it. Maybe it's a tell. He knows about the negate, right? So we will get him with the stroke. That's probably his game plan. And then he's in full top deck mode when he uses this card. This should be the high value spell. If the and the, also if they cannot kill the fairy, we just draw more stuff. Oh, oh, that's that's way weaker than I hoped. So the game was more over than I expected, to be honest. Alright, cut down. And now we can go for the token with the fairy. We could go, you know, super hard and just play another the fairy. But I don't think we need it. This should be quick enough. However, we will play Kaito because it's a planeswalker deck apparently. <laughs> uh, because it pumps the the little Teferi much much faster. Grotto is cool, but not as cool. And you can see that it, it has started. Alright, we keep up the counter spells. And we say go. Like, I think if, if we show the hand that we have right now, our opponent would scoop. Maybe he expects like that he hits invoke into invoke, into maybe invoke and corrupt. I don't think there's anything else that helps him. So this doesn't matter because our Teferi has Vigilance and it will be way bigger than the Stresspasser, so he cannot really attack. One damage is basically the only trigger he will get. Uh, and he cannot even pump with this one because the first two chapters pump and he's at three already. Well, when he goes into his turn, right? So. He can jump, but that, that's basically it. And I will draw a card later. And I will also use the fairy to make more tokens, so it's a bit easier. So I guess I should reverse the order, but you know that the game is over. And I usually play a bit more, you know, wasteful, when I know the shouldn't make a difference. In case you wanted to, to nice you know, to write those face. comments. <laughs> you can still write them. They support the channel, I guess. Uh, let's review. And we say end the turn. Let's gain some life. Uh, Celestus is a really nice passive, just, you know, heal over time. And you can see that it works with the furry perfectly. So, very possibly a dance step I will kill the Trespasser just to make the game a bit faster. Yeah, let's counter it. Let's counter it. It's it's kind of funny how many spells that were relevant stroke didn't hit in this particular game, but don't worry, it will hit stuff. Yeah, like it, it's inevitable death when we are in this situation. Uh, it's it's just not worth the time. The chance that we come back from triple planeswalker is like zero. 
All right, guys, going first. This is a good hand. I like it. We just need to hit one single land. And given the history of the channel, when it never whiffed, uh, I'm sure it will go very, very great. Honestly, I think we should draw one. Like, there's low chance we, we, we don't hit anything, right? All right, cool. Mr. Happy Belgium. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Already whiffing on the lands, man. Please don't do me like this. <laughs> All right. That's a cheek. It's a 1-1. One -one. It hits stuff. It's pretty cute. Play with fire. I'm not sure if we kill this. Do we kill this, guys? It can stack a lot of damage during the game. You know what? We are a control deck. We want to go one for one. And somehow... <laughs> Somehow we managed to hit the land. Oh man, that was close. So the game is absolutely not over. He's actually having more cards than we do. And with Fertai, it will continue. That's a Swift Spear. So we probably hit, kill everything that is higher cost. And just Path of Prey, whatever, you know, is here. If it's cheap. If I knew I would have Path of Prey, I would play a bit differently. But, you know, it should be fine. He's down to two cards. Cool. You know what? Jokes aside, it's not the worst draw. <laughs> we have at least exactly a candidate for just removing something, right? We know we never need double Celestus. We know what this deck does and it never kills artifacts. Unless it's his own. Cutdown is interesting. We probably will find a good use for it. For example, Misha's Founder is a perfect target. And he will do something with the flames. We can kill it in response and just take the damage. And we can just trade Airtai, which will be card for card. Alright, we take the damage. With Celestus we can be much more flexible with just, you know, burn spells. We could cut it down. We could cut it down. Do I want to give him the next card? You know what? All right, let's not be fancy. Uh, I think if we get a head tempo wise so much, it should be okay. Man, where are the three lands? <laughs> I just realized. Uh, can we attack? We probably can't. I cannot flip to the other time because then I'm fully tapped out and I don't want to. Uh, at least until he is down to zero cards, right? So I have cut down for this one. I have negate for something else. All right, card for card. Good. Oh, I hope he does it. Oh, that's perfect. So we are a land destruction deck right now. Can you please attack? Thank you. That is appreciated. We were waiting for this one. All right. Oh boy, this is really bad card for them. <laughs> All right, it will take a while, it seems, but we will cycle all of the bad cards. Man, Celestus is single-handedly creating this game, basically. All right, we can actually out-heal this with Celestus, so that's pretty cool. What is the last card? Show me what's in the box. They want the scry. So we don't want them to scry them. And we can puff of parry this, and we kind of trade it for everything, right? Let's see what we do. That's really important. Oh, and they double spurred. Perfect. You know, there are some versions that play Raiju and it can hit something, so maybe land is worse, but I like my land, right? I will get it. Probably the best punish for this play is Squee from the top, so let's see. Not hitting it, very nice. Um, Memory Deluge is insanely good card. All right, that should be it, right? Yeah, Memory Deluge was what we needed exactly. Let's see, Ferdon, very annoying card. And you know it. So he wants to attack. I like the Celestus because the Day-Night Cycle is a soft counter as well. 
Because right now, if they want to play something else, they will flip and I will get the life gain. And they definitely do not want us to get the life gain. And here's the Phoenix, so it will be a hassle. Is there anything better than Memory the Rush? Let's not draw right now. We can cycle this one, I guess. So we have what? Five, six mana. Possibly seven. So then we don't go to night time. This is just a 2-2 two -two that cannot block, man. I think we have some luxury and I don't think whatever he has in the hand is super threatening. Let's draw the card. Let's cycle all the lands from the top. With this we can have some leniency. Also we can get back art if we want. Could be cool at some point. And with Celestus, as you can see, we can absorb some of the damage and it means we can play very, very loosely. Like, for example, tapping out for uh, card advantage. And that gave us such huge advantage. How do you work exactly? You control deals of to opponent or battle. Interesting on the creature. You may pay and it comes into battle with only haste, no counters, no power. No counters, no power. This taxes their mana and forces them to have instant and I believe they did not have instant, right? So we'll play with the furry. Yeah, no instants. And we'll actually go for the minus two. Because that means he needs to draw instant just to kill this and in next turn it will be too huge for removal. So no, we did it. Was was an interesting one. Let's go with the marsh. This way we have double blue, double black on turn two, and that should be enough. So syncopate is activated. I like with, when Sorin hits the spot, it should be really good. And wedding announcement is really brutal because this was probably his best play. So right now we start filtering with the grotto because we drew two of them. That's a plain soaker for the next turn. They're playing some creature based deck so probably it will be very hard for him to remove. you know what i'll take it definitely not the best card in the whole deck against this situation but i think it's good enough it, it should help at some point and first let's go with sorry and i will get instantly the card because moment we hit some kind of sweeper probably will win right and we can filter those slants from the top at least. Alright. Wandering Emperor will not be enough to kill Sorry. Honestly, I did not expect Emperor. So, oh, it might be a token deck. The colors would match. So no toxic, just a lot of tokens overall. What is this card? Incubate. Alright, and Ramster. Okay, we probably cannot punish it, so we just will roll with it. One creature. Alright, so he can activate it in the next step. Still, we can keep drawing cards. If Sorin takes the damage, it <laughs> most expensive card of the deck, easy. Alright, so how do we do it? I don't really want to play the fur into it. So I could kill this. I think we much rather go with Kaito and some extra cards in the next turn. I think that's the play. Alright, let's see the play. So certainly we will probably die, right? Theoretically. But he just plus one this and kills Sorin. But I think we got enough value. With Tefer in, in hand and Kaito on the board, we should get enough emperor will stay because we'll just deal one damage with the ninja i would guess they cannot remove the ninja but maybe maybe they definitely play some removal in the deck but with two cards they probably don't have it right now we don't get blocks this is one of the cool things about planeswalkers you fo they are so scary your opponent just you know attacks it with multiple creatures and then you are like, okay, I don't need it so much. And suddenly you are gaining like 10 life. Basically what's happening. All right. Damage to damper. Not a biggie. But drawing card is fun. I know something you 
I think we just play the land. Yeah, okay, the mana will be fine. I need to be really careful with the mana in this deck. And we have double blue for dissipate and stroke. And that should be enough to win the game. So of course they can keep uh, creating tokens, but we can keep killing tokens. Greeters. Not the scariest card. We probably cut it down and that's it. I'm not super scared about the treasure because we just hard counter whatever he plays. And I actually want him to cast expensive spells because then I get them. And he'll probably explode after it. Alright, let's keep the board here. That will help quite a lot. Also, we force Emperor to lose one loyalty every single turn. So, in two turns she will die just from this. Let's draw first. Let's see what we what we get. Yeah, for example, the shores is absolutely not needed. So we could play the fairy and go for the stroke. I kind of like it, to be honest. But for this, we need triple blue mana. And that's the point. Alright. That's at the fairy. And I really want to draw cards, especially that if I put creature... Um, like he might remove it, and I'm losing a lot of loyalty. If there's planeswalkers, he needs some spell to remove it, and we're fine with spells. Alright, so drawing cards, that's fine. He will draw one card, but not really instant effect. Yeah, Elspeth will be annoying, so let's make sure that she dies. And honestly, that should be it. I think we just won. This one counter spell, man, is always so important. We could clear the board. Yeah, I like the situation quite a lot. So we play the Grotto. I cannot say no to a counter spell man. I just simply cannot. So we go for invasion. We won't counter whatever is next, but I think we should not have to, to win. And now we can create pretty serious board. Honestly, he needs a sweeper right now. Not only we can flip the battle or kill the Emperor, but we just have so much stuff right now. And when we start doing cards, this will be so huge. So if he cannot answer this Teferi in particular, like he knows he will lose the game in like two turns. All right, let's go another. All right, guys, going first with some removal. I mean, that's good that we don't have double payment. It tends to be very often the case. And here we are. Some high quality gaming from the other side. So let's see which creature of haste will happen on this turn. Right, Grotto is kind of cute with mono color. Alright. You know what? I'm not sure what the deck is about, but I know I don't like him having cards. So let's make sure that we get some value from this turn. So Dissipate is open. Go for the throat. Cannot hit it because it's an artifact. And let's see what the follow-up is. One damage a turn is not super scary. Alright. I guess. Yeah, you can equip. It was highlighted. <laughs> do I kill it? I do kill it. I know it's weird. I know that's not perfect play. Punished immediately after doing a play. Alright, uh, we really want the soaring on the battlefield, so for this reason I just wanted to keep it clear. Like one extra creature can be the difference between having soaring and not having soaring. Alright, that's weird. So I expect it's a gruel something. And they kept like only red mana in their hand, that's, that's weird, but okay. So they burned the... what is it? Briefcase? Uh, man, if you play briefcase, you should be playing five colors, to be honest. I'm a bit surprised that this is the case. Uh, let's draw the card first. Not perfect, but it's something. 
and of course he really wants to crack those battles on Sorin, so we will be on the defensive a little bit. We should have enough life, I think, for a moment. Alright, like two mana, try to hit stuff. Very often he might hit land, so it's generally lower value than just countering whatever he gets. Alright, some treasure shenanigans. Alright. I mean, with Sorin we should be fine, man. So, I will make another vampire, just because then we can very freely attack. And that will give us infinite life, so we can keep drawing cards very, very easily. And go above the lethal range. So they will play this, we will counter it. Not sure what exactly is his plan, but I know this will really enhance it, right? They probably have something very explosive in the end. And also we can actually start going for the lethal. Cutdown is a nice draw. Let's see the card. Definitely take it. We probably will use it as a bounce, but we'll see. I mean, that's a full damage turn. Pretty good. This protects Sorin and also enables our double go for the throat, so we'll take it. Uh, this is one of the things with Path of Paris. They either hit perfectly the spot and you win the game, or they just lie in your hand. <laughs> but this is why we have double Celestus and Kaito, so we can cycle those. Uh, about the win rate and all this stuff. Even though it's one of the best performing Demir decks for me, uh, it's hard to get it to 50% win rate, honestly. We kinda deranked, you will probably see the stats right now on the screen. Honestly, we improved in them because we are on some losing streak. And is that the matter of bad draws? Sometimes, but not exactly. Demir feels more clunky than Azorius. You don't have the populate just that answers everything. You don't have fair words that answers everything. So you can feel the difference. And with Demir, it's harder to hit the correct cards for correct situation. However, when you hit it, everything works fine. And you know, guys, I think that's it for today for Demir. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know I missed Demir on the channel, so hopefully you did as well. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like. It shows the support, it helps, and it shows that you want to have more Demir on the channel. I would love to make some more control videos, but you can see that it's not easy. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. So thank you guys for watching and see you tomorrow.